Welcome back to Film Fetish. As usual, I'm your host CJ, and before we get started, let's address the elephant in the room. As you'll notice, I'm clean shaven for the most part. How did this happen? <laughs> Funny story, while I was shaving I sneezed. That's the whole story. Now, I get it, it looks like somebody shaved the ass of a hamster, it's quite horrifying. We'll get through this together. Now today we're going to talk about a great genre, as recommended by my father, as you'll see in the YouTube comments below, which is my favorite westerns. Now as I started compiling the list, I realized it was going to be huge, so I decided to split it into two parts and do my favorite top 10 westerns. So without any further ado, let's rootin' tootin' begin. I'm so sorry I did that. To start us off, I figured why not pick one of my personal favorite movies of all time. I'm of course talking about the third part of the Man With No Name trilogy, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Starring everyone's favorite badass Clint Eastwood. Now the film is directed by Sergio Leone, who also directed the other two parts of the series, A Fistful of Dollars and A Few Dollars More. This movie is legendary, and rightfully so. It is three hours long, and it is fully engaging the entire time. We have massive landscape shots. We have beautiful cinematography of nothing other than just people dying on a battlefield. And we have an incredible soundtrack by the legendary Ennio Morricone. If somehow you haven't seen this masterpiece of a western, then please go and look it up. Also, while you're looking it up, look at the terrible review by Robert Ebert, who originally trashed this film and then later came back to apologize. Next up is probably the darkest movie on this list. I'm of course talking about Ron Howard's The Missing, starring Tommy Lee Jones and Kate Blanchett. The movie follows Blanchett's character as she hunts down a gang of bandits who have kidnapped her daughter and murdered her husband. She unwillingly has the team up with her father who just happens to be an expert in Indian culture. This movie is full of heartbreaking scenes of Tommy Lee Jones simply trying to reconnect with his daughter horrible scenes of graphic violence, and just this really overbearing, tense tone throughout the entire film that doesn't let up until its final moments. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend that you go and seek it out. You will not be disappointed. Next up is the comedy western Two Mules for Sister Sarah, starring our man Clint Eastwood and the legendary Shirley MacLaine as our titular character. The movie is about a bounty hunter who aids a seemingly innocent nun as she attempts to assist Mexican revolutionaries who are trying to invade a French blockade. What follows is just non-stop troubles in their path, including a hilarious scene where Clint Eastwood has an arrow on his shoulder and he's trying to talk Shirley MacLaine's character into like removing it with gunpowder and it's freaking hilarious and amazing. And that's all you need to know about the movie. Other than the fact that there's a great twist in the third act that I'm not going to spoil here because that's the whole point of the movie. So take my word, check it out, you will not be disappointed. Next up we have the Magnificent Seven remake, directed by one of my favorite directors, Antoine Fuqua. As with the other iterations of this film, we have our seven mercenaries teaming up to take on a Baron and his massive army. The 2016 reboot takes the cast and just goes buck wild with it. We've got Denzel Washington, Vincent D'Onofrio, and Chris Pratt. It also has a ton of character interaction, which leads to some pretty hysterical dialogue moments. It has great action scenes brought on with beautiful cinematography, and a surprising amount of graphic deaths for a PG-13 film. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend you seek it out, because it is one of those movies that's it's a remake, but it's actually better than it should be, so it shouldn't have fallen through the cracks. You know what I mean. Check it out. Last film of the day is a film that's going to catch people off guard as an odd choice, but I absolutely love it. I'm of course talking about Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West. And even though all the naysayers out there will tell you otherwise, one of them will likely be texting me once this premieres. This movie is a ton of fun, and I believe more people should be talking about it. The film is a comedy western romance film that follows a sheep herder who just wants more out of life, and his events that lead up to him becoming smitten with the new woman in town that just also happens to be the unhappy wife to a legendary outlaw played hilariously by Liam Neeson. What follows are non-stop puns, cameos 
that you really do not see coming, and a surprising amount of graphic violence. I enjoyed every second of this film, and hope that after this video comes out, you'll give it a second chance too. Especially you. There we have it. That was part one of my two-part westerns list. I'll see you guys back in a couple of weeks with part two. There we go. That was part one of my top ten westerns list. I'll see you guys back in a couple of weeks for part two. While you wait, please feel free to leave down in the comments what you hope to see in the next list and any future lists you'd like to see me do. As usual, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe for future content. This has been Film Fetish, I'm your host CJ, and as always, please remember to keep it lowbrow.